Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Normal Guy of the North here. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I can assure you no seal clubbing actually happened. It's not a ship review, it's not a tier list, and it's not a reaction video. Instead, we're going to slow things down and actually think through something that gets said a lot in World of Warships, but almost never gets clearly defined. So with that said, let's get into it. This video was inspired by a recent Top 10 Best Ships video by Overlord Bo, where he made the statement that Black Swan is the best ship in World of Warships, and I want to be very clear right up front. I like his channel. I respect the work he does. This is not a rant, this is not drama, and this is not a response video meant to tear anyone down. What he said genuinely got me thinking, because once you stop and really think about that claim, it opens the door to a much bigger question. What does a great ship actually mean in World of Warships? Because depending on how you answer that, the conclusion can change dramatically. Is a great ship the one with the highest win rate? The one that does the most damage? The one that gets the most kills? The one that survives the longest? Or the one that simply feels good to play? Those are not the same thing. And this is where I respectfully disagree, not emotionally, not personally, but analytically. I don't disagree that Black Swan is a good ship. I disagree with the idea that it's the best once you actually define what best means in a way that scales across the game. And that's why this video isn't really about Tier 1. Tier 1 is just the starting point. This is about something much bigger in World of Warships, how we talk about ship strength without ever agreeing on criteria. We throw around words like broken, overpowered, best ship, without ever stopping to ask, best at what? So instead of arguing opinions, I wanted to test something. What if we actually defined best and applied that definition consistently, not just to one ship, not just to one tier, but eventually every tier, every class, destroyers, cruisers, battleships, carriers, and submarines. That's where this is going over 2026. Today is the proof of concept. Early on, I want to explain the model clearly because transparency matters. We settled on four core performance categories weighted equally. Each category is worth 25 points for a total of 100. Those categories are win rate, average damage, average frags, kill to death ratio. The top ship in each category gets the full 25 points. Every other ship scores proportionally, add them up, the ship closest to 100 wins, this is important because no single stat can carry the result. Win rate alone can't do it. Damage alone can't do it. Kills alone can't do it. A ship has to perform well across the board. One thing we intentionally did not include is total battles played. And that wasn't an oversight. It was a design choice. Battles played does not measure performance. It measures availability, popularity, how long a ship has existed, how forgiving it is for new players, especially at Tier 1, Battle counts are heavily distorted by starter ships and forced exposure. Including battles played would reward access, not strength, so it stays out of the model. We also looked at average experience, and while XP is a useful stat, we chose not to score it directly. Why? Because average XP is largely derived from the other performance metrics. Damage, frags, survivability, objective contribution. It's a synthesized outcome, not an independent pillar. Including it would double count performance and add complexity without changing the conclusion. And yes, we checked. Spoiler alert, it doesn't change the result. So we start at tier one, not because tier one matters most, but because it strips the game down to fundamentals. No radar spam, no super consumables, no layered gimmicks, just guns, positioning, and decision making, and full disclosure here. In order to get the B-roll footage for this video, I actually had to play tier one again which I have not done since late 2018. So yes, if my aim looks a little confused in those clips, that's because my muscle memory was screaming, why the heck are we here? I only did co-op, so no seal clubbing. So what happens when we apply the model? When we normalize win rate, damage, frags, and KD into a 100 point system across every tier one ship, the result is very clear. Black Swan does not finish first. It doesn't finish second. It doesn't even finish third. It finishes in the bottom third of tier one ships under a balanced performance model, and that's not a value judgment. That's math. Black Swan performs well in win rate, but it lags significantly in damage output, kill pressure, survivability efficiency. Win rate alone simply cannot offset those gaps. 
And this is the most important takeaway from the entire video. Black Swan is not dominant. It is consistent. That's a crucial distinction. A consistent ship helps you avoid losing. A dominant ship helps you win harder. Both have value, but they are not the same thing. And once you separate those ideas, a lot of long-standing assumptions in World of Warships start to fall apart. This is why I wanted to make this video, because once you define best properly, the conversation changes. And over 2026, we're going to apply this same framework to higher tiers, different classes. And eventually the ships people argue about the most. Some community favorites will hold up, some will not. And that's okay, because this isn't about winning arguments, it's about understanding the game better. So let me know what you think. Do you agree with the framework? Would you change the weighting? And which tier should we tackle next? Drop your thoughts in the comments, because this is the start of a much bigger conversation. Thanks for watching, I do appreciate it, and please feel free to click on the videos on your screen for more World of Warships content. But as always, take care, Stay safe and I wish you all the best. See you in the next one and bye for now.